and welcome to the yet another dynamic episode of Newsmakers, the show where we bring to you people from different walks of life sharing their success stories on our platform. Because at Newsmakers, we aspire to inspire you. My dear friends, I'm your host Simran for this entire series, and today I bring to you a very very dynamic personality. He is very famously known as AB Kids Life Coach, and he's also the founder of. Happiness Parent Hub, a very different and a unique name, and he's making all the parents happy. Let us just welcome him on our episode and get to know how can we all be happy. Please allow me to welcome Mr. Amit Patra on the sets of Newsmakers. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you so much. Such a privilege to have a person like you. We would like to know that you've been doing so much. You were a retired army person. You were an entrepreneur, and now that you're a kids' life coach, which is very unique. We would like to know your journey from how you started and how you reached here. So, started my life uh, joined, in fact, National Defence Academy mm-hmm. at the age of eighteen years. I was very fortunate to get through. I was studying in a government college in Delhi, uh, government uh, school in Delhi. Mm-hmm. From there, reaching NDA, that was a obvious, uh, obviously dream come true. Absolutely. And then, certain thing didn't go well in my life as expected. And it started with my own life journey, and I became very negative and cynical in my own life. And in fact, I was a pessimist to the core. I could pick a fight with people at the drop of a hat, and everything was topsy turvy in my life. It was such a bad phase that I was going through, and I had no idea what to do. There was I was losing all my friends because I, as I told you, I could pick a fight with people at the drop of a hat. So a stage reached in my life, and I had no one to talk to. Mm-hmm. And if you or anyone can relate to it, I'm sure you will know that is, you're like you know, life becomes hell for you. Uh, and that is when I thought that I need to do something differently. I cannot continue in my life as uh, you know everyone else is doing. And that's where I took a path which was very different from everyone else. So I started introspecting as to what is it that I was doing wrong in my life. So I used to think, you know, the people are wrong, and that's why uh, I could see fault in them. I could blame them for whatever was happening, and that's how the fights used to start. But then when I reflected, how is it that everyone is wrong and I am right all the time? There is something amiss about that. And I said, introspection. Obviously, uh, it was a long, uh, long journey. And I started realizing that this is my thought process, which I need to correct. I am looking at negative aspects of almost everything, every person. I am finding where they, you know, what they are doing wrong. That is a wrong thought process which I had, which I corrected. And I spent only and only seventeen years of my life correcting my mindset to be. highly positive and optimistic person that i am today mm-hmm. from a very negative person uh, that i was once upon a time today in fact i am so optimistic when everyone else is uh, around me is losing hope i am the one who will say no hold on okay. we can find a way yeah. this is my journey what brought me to this and uh, you know this is exactly how it is wow so it's so good to hear like nobody Ever tells about their past like this that they've been into such a negative notion, and coming up to becoming a life coach, of course you need to really work upon yourself. And this is what Mr. Batra did, and what a journey that you've had till now. And I'm sure there's going to be much more that you're already doing, and you will do for sure. Now that you are a kids life coach, very famously known as this, why did you choose to be, you know, in this uh, category of just healing kids and of course parents? Why not some other coaching? Okay, so what I realized in my life is that whatever that was going on in my mind, they were nothing but due to my childhood experiences. Mm-hmm. In fact, what uh, my realization was: who so you are t- today, mm-hmm. right? You, anyone else, me? It is because of the childhood experiences, memories that you accumulate. True. Many of us are not able to connect the dots, but that's a reality. and that is what dawned upon me as well when i was going through this phase of my life so actually what happened i went to my childhood i revisited my childhood multiple times and what i visualized 
that like your childhood is like your foundation right you are erecting a building and there is a foundation which is under the ground so i actually visualized myself going deep down and what i saw there was a lot of pus which had got accumulated and that is what was causing me so much of pain so anyone who is today going through some painful experiences like or you know uh you you have uh, you are going through difficult phase mentally you are not stable those challenges you have here the mental challenges you have it's it's that pus which is there which is creating problem for you today so i actually uh filled buckets you know with that pus and i threw it out to remove all that and then uh, so metaphorically i actually uh, replaced all that with fresh material to create a new foundation for myself so that is what i did and when i was going through all this as i realized this is a childhood which is so critical for us and if you can this foundation can be strong we each human being is so capable there is nothing stopping us but the key is there in the foundation the childhood and that is when i decided that i need to work with children guide the parent i work with children and uh, create a beautiful uh, future for us for our generations wow i mean you really put me to thinking that you know everything starts from our childhood and now even i'm just going and in introspecting this case of course reaching to any place in your life it all comes from where you started and of course the family that most the everything of course it matters and you chose a beautiful thing that you were working with kids and that's beautiful i'm sure you must have had amazing experiences i would like to know that when you deal with parents like there are different parents coming to you with different problems like some may have sibling problems and there are also kids who are you know also facing some kind of a problem in their schools you know with this how do you deal differently with all these parents like you do you have different techniques for everyone or is just one way of teaching okay so the first thing that we need to realize in this mostly when we are looking at a problem any problem right so if even if you do not talk about a children problem in general also if you talk about a problem first thing that we need to analyze is that the actual problem or is that just the symptom so it's like you have fever right 3 4 days it's fever you treat person for fever and the person heals what if the fever persists for 15 20 days the problem that's that that fever is not the actual problem it's a symptom right so you need to diagnose what's the actual problem and that's what you need to treat similarly life also first we need to understand the problem that we are talking about is it the real problem or that's just a symptom most of us in our life we are looking at the symptom trying to address it then we say i'm not getting a solution because you have not even understood the problem actually the first thing is to understand the problem what is it what is the root cause of it which is driving it now if you talk about children the issues which are there, there are multiple i think if you make a list these days there are scores of issues the list is endless absolutely so these issues when you're talking about what are these are these the real problem or they are just a symptom the reality is these are just the symptoms and so if uh, so i give another example so you look at the look at a tree right so all these things that you talk about these problems so uh, child not interested in studies gadget addiction stubbornness whatever the problem that you talk to related to children so if you have to compare with a part of a tree which part would it be so i asked this question the parent which part would it be so what do you think which part it is any guess that you would like to take it's a root i guess so child's behavior it is the fruit okay. child not interested it is the fruit okay. performance it is the fruit okay so it's all fruits that much they are all fruits right so the fruits now you're talking child is acting stubborn mm-hmm. it's a fruit Okay. child lost interest in study this is a fruit gadget addiction it's a fruit behavior performance all these things are different fruits on this tree so is it not like a root uh, connected to the roots like whatever is coming up yes just so, because you're going in there yes so uh, so all these thing what you are seeing the problem per se or whatever it is they are the fruits right uh so what is there all these things when we are looking at child is acting my child is getting very aggressive stubborn 
so you are looking at that fruit and then what you are trying to do you are trying to address that so what most parents are doing or the society is doing they go to that fruit try to inject into the medicine and hope that fruit will become healthy how can it be mm-hmm. so two things which we have to keep in mind firstly all these fruits they are interconnected mostly we are looking at isolation i want my child not to be aggressive so you tell the child don't be aggressive calm down you know it's not good for you mm-hmm. it's a fruit which is connected to other issues mm-hmm. you cannot in any case address it in isolation mm-hmm. child personality is complete it is holistic that's how you need to look at correct and you will see you you talk of any problem do you think any problem whatever be it is it is an isolation no it can happen. there are there are multiple yes there are multiple things which are there but whichever is dominating whichever is you know at that point of time is more painful for us we try to focus on that rather than understanding the complete personality of the child and then try to address that is one thing so you cannot address these issues in isolation it is not possible however hard you may try it is not going to work mm-hmm. right temporarily some people get the result and they are happy wow i am making progress no you are not you might be suppressing the problem for the time being but that problem will be either it will recur resurface or it will appear in some other form that's how it happens mm-hmm. that is one aspect of it the second aspect these fruits what you are talking about so what you said the roots they are connected to the roots so as long you keep your focus on fruit it cannot see the fruits are not healthy it has only one meaning the roots are not healthy what you need to work on the roots roots when you make the roots healthy which fruit is going to be healthy all the fruit, all the fruit yes. you do not work in isolation yes. and that's how it works so beautifully when you work on the roots the fruits become so beautiful it takes parents schools everyone with whom we work by surprise how did that happen we did not work on the child's confidence communication skill decision making this how is that happening why it is happening because you are working on the roots roots are becoming healthy fruits have no option that's how the nature has been created so you you are absolutely right because when you told me that you chose to be a kids life coach of course you went back to your uh, you know childhood and you chose to become one now when you're healing your kids of course you go to the roots now i would really be keen to know one you know testimony or some example where you really worked on a child and he's doing daily well please share some so there are multiple such you know case studies if i have to talk about uh so i have to start off with three and a half year old girl parents three and a half year old girl and one and a half year old girl two children and this three and a half year old girl was so jealous of the younger one if you have ever heard about it to the extent that this girl would pick up anything and would hit the younger one anything means anything and parent was scared some day some something can happen to the younger one this girl would not take any interest in you know writing with that of the stage she was going through very stubborn she will sp- put on people's faces visiting their home she will go inside the room the cabinet throw everything on the floor so the, it was an extreme case she was quite very insecure oh my goodness it was extreme so my child is stubborn this child was stubborn to the power infinity if you understand that was the stage so and uh so we worked with this child so we made the parent understand few basics the roots why it is happening what do you need to do and the same child it was 5 months so when i work like uh, i work one to one and i work in i do group coaching when i do one to one i ask parent you set a target so this child okay the child is not listening to the parent so on a scale of 10 right now what's the number so obviously in this case it was 1 right 1 on 10 okay what about the sibling rivalry sibling love rather that's how i put it so on a scale of 1 to 10 where was it it was 1 obviously so i tell them okay you set a target for yourself tell me what would you like to see uh, maybe 5 6 months down the line let me know that so for sibling rivalry they said okay we will sibling love we would take it to 
the child listening to us obedient we would like to take it to nine that's how we would want it so this way i set five six parameters at the beginning and i say this is your objective this is where we'll reach six months down the line okay and after six months the sibling uh, love was on a scale of 10 mm-hmm. they had set a target of 8 i took it to when i asked mother how much is it 12 <laughs> i said what do you mean 12 the state is now the same girl when the younger one like you know when you are giving younger one bath to ch- the children start crying mm-hmm. when the younger one is crying the elder one comes and stand there why are you making her cry <laughs> no she she is going to the other extreme now that's how it works it's all about psychology like you have to like i'm really surprised with the with the age that you had to deal with like 3 years uh, an age where that she really wanted a coaching that point of time you know insecurities lot of such things this these kind of emotions they start to build up at such a tender age you know seeing your little sibling and then you become repulsive so uh, how beautifully you uh, you know change into an aggressive child to a lovable child towards your sibling that's really nice sir i'm sure there must be a lot of such experiences as your so to uh, add here mm-hmm. it is not the children who need coaching <laughs> yeah. it is the parent who need coaching children are like plants they are only responding to the environment which we are creating their personality is taking shape they are all about how you are responding how you are you know interacting with them so all these thing this one thing i did not even talk to the child once okay. let me tell you another case study and this is very recent this child 13 year old she had not stepped out of her room for almost two months going through depression she was not willing to go to school sibling rivalry at the speak no studies only gadget addiction two months he had not stepped out of the room okay. sibling rivalry many 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 more many things were there mm-hmm. right this mother she joined happy parents hub four weeks precisely this girl now she has put a photograph on facebook mm-hmm. where this girl is climbing a tree okay okay every morning she goes out cycling and on her own she came to the mother she said tomorrow is my exam and i would like to go to school and appear for the exam okay. parents parenting is it's all about parenting how you are raising the children it's not children per se mm-hmm. it is the parents mm-hmm. who are impacting the children the plus and minus of whatever you see mm-hmm. they are reflection of how you are raising them what kind of environment that you are creating mm-hmm. very important. very important so viewers it has really put me to into a thinking mode see everything starts from home even if your child is suffering for some x y z reasons you have to introspect see yourself there could be things which you are lacking in and you have to work upon yourself like mr batra just told us that it is all parents the environment of the house that you need to work upon and work upon yourself and your child will be healed now we also see like you just spoke about the 13 year one i have been you know dealing with this issues also because you know we have kids and we've been raising them so teenage issue is a lot of women that i come with, uh, come across and most of my friends have been saying that oh it becomes very difficult to raise a teenager because there are a lot of hormonal changes there are a lot of and we are in such a digitalized time they're mostly into gadgets and after corona things have been really really different kids have become so prone to digital uh, world because this is the need of the hour but now the distance between a parent the conversations have become so less i really want you to tell us that how to deal with this because this is something which i have seen lot of people is very very uh, important question for all of us please tell us teenage issues that yes. sort okay so teenage issues we are talking about that you made a very relevant point hormonal changes are taking place right very very uh, that's a very difficult stage for the child to go through it right we, they do not know what actually is happening but now if you have to talk about teenage issues let's understand if i have to divide our life into three phases 0 to 8 years 8 to 17 18 roughly and beyond that 
So zero to eight years are the formative years when the personality is actually starting to shape, take shape. And most of us do not lay much significance on on that phase. What we need to realize that is the most important phase of the child life or any person. That is where that actually what I told you the foundation is getting laid. Correct. Most of us take it very lightly. So what I call this phase is when you are like you are erecting a wall and you are laying the bricks. But in that phase, the wall has not, it's not been strengthened per se. 8 to 17 or 20 years, it varies, the figure varies, is when the cementing work is happening. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. The cementing work which is taking place. Mm-hmm. So, 0 to 8 the most critical, but that is where parents play a very important role. 8 to 17, you can still change the child, can transform children. That is where parent and coaches like me come and play a very, very important role. So it becomes a teamwork kind of thing, right? So 8 to eight to 17, 20 years, roughly that, that say. And beyond that is when your personality has taken shape. Now it's about you. Okay. Till that time, you can transform children okay. to a great extent. So I just gave you a couple of examples. Three and a half year old, 13 year old, 15 year old. They get transformed like this, you don't even realize one month, two months, that's how the, you know, in quick time it happens. Okay. All these changes happen in quick time. Now coming to the teenage issues, what we are talking about, it's so difficult to manage a child, a teenage, teenager. What you are forgetting, or you just reflect on, uh, you know, anyone who is facing that challenge. Teenage issues is nothing. But they are basically the issues which were already existing, they have magnified now. Till 8, 9, 10 years, you could slap your child and control. Right? Now the child is reaching your height, child can look into your eye, the child is influenced by the environment and the child thinks that now he or she has grown up and can do things at her own will. Only thing is voice, the pitch has increased, right? The Now the child has taken, uh, the child has reached the stage, says, now I can give it back to you. And something I do not like, I can convey it to you. Till 8 to 10 years, the child did not have that courage. Right? Yeah. And then that compounded with the peer pressure and the hormonal changes which you mentioned. It is just that when the child is in that phase, now those issues which are already existing, they are becoming more visible to you. It's not that they were not there. Now they are becoming more visible to you and calling them as teenage issues. The issues are all, always there. The issues were there. Now they got magnified and the child is looking into your eye and telling you. Look boss. Look boss, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, this is uh, like I just realized this that, you know, everything comes from your childhood. You know, everything comes from the roots. And that way we have to work upon. My dear viewers, we have just noticed when Sir said that you have to work till the age of 17. You still have time to reform your kids. Now, saying reforming would not also be a positive thing because they are your mirror. Like they are actually showcasing what you yourself are. So what we need to work upon is uh, either have a life coach like we have here, Mr. Batra, who has been working diligently with kids and reforming their lives. And as a parent, we and a coach can do wonders for our kids if they are suffering with some kind of a disparity or something which is hurting them. Moving further, sir. Now that you've told about the teen issues is of course very, very prime. Digital world is also there. Now parents also have to, you know, this this stressing time of uh, working, like parents are running to meet their ends. How to have that work-life balance? Like as a parent, now I'm coming back to parents because kids is yes. You have to also see your kids, you also into corporate world. You're like working day and night. How to have that balance with your kids where you know, okay, fine, we sit with you, we also talk it out. So we want to have that kind of a solution as well. Right. So you talked about stress, a very relevant thing which we need to, you know, uh, discuss. So stress, if I have to talk about this, rather let me put it this way, that uh, I ask parent, what is that one thing which is causing maximum harm to your children? What do you think? You are a mother. You tell me. What do you think? Which is that 
one thing which is causing maximum harm to children these days? I have multiple things to tell. But for the prime thing, what I would say is, of course, this uh, exposure to a lot of, uh, you know, social media and, you know, just being on the phones already. And they can't do without it. They have to. But then right. it's also harming them. So I, I was having this interaction. Uh, I had gone to a school mm-hmm. where the principal, counselor, all the teachers, they were present there. So I, I asked them the same thing. And this counselor was otherwise really good. So uh, she was handling multiple such cases and she said one teen boy came and pay her, his parents were there and the gadget addiction is such a major thing today. It is actually the main problem which is there. So uh, different people have different you know uh, opinion but mostly it is gadget addiction, peer pressure, education system, all that. What I tell parent, one thing that is causing maximum harm to your children your anxiety is your child's biggest enemy. There is nothing which is causing more harm to your kids than your anxiety, that negative energy which you are giving to the child. The child is like a plant. Its roots have to become healthy. But if you pour dirty water, what will happen to the roots? The roots can never be healthy. Rest, all things are secondary. Their effect can be neutralized. It can be negated. But your energy which is going to the root. And this anxiety in many cases work like acids. So if you pour the acid into the roots, what will happen? What will happen? They will da- they will be damaged completely. So the biggest the problem that you have with your child, more of the acid that you have poured in the roots, and now you are wondering why those roots are not healthy, they can never be healthy. Your anxiety is your child's biggest enemy. Keep this in mind for everyone. This is what you need to understand. And this is that's why this is the number one thing that we work with parents. When they join happy parents, the first thing we tell them, it's your energy which you need to correct. And that's where when the magic starts happening. And why? So as I told you, we get results in two weeks, four, four weeks, a child who was not stepping out. This child is under medication with you know, some good psychiatrist, psychologist. And four weeks of the mother being there, the child is kind of changed now. Wow. Right? Mm-hmm. How did that happen? Because we changed the energy. That water which is going to the roots now is healthy. The roots are becoming healthy. That's the number one thing that you need to work on. So if I have to sum up my entire parenting philosophy in one line, mm-hmm. what I say Parenting is the game of energy. What kind of energy you are giving to your child? We are doing so many good things to our children. We are buying them good stuff. We are taking care. We, you know, we give them confidence. We send them to the best of the school. Nothing counts. One thing that counts is your energy. What is the energy that you are giving? What is it that you are thinking about your children? It's your thoughts. It's your vibes which count much more than anything else because that is what will eventually lead to the healthy or unhealthy roots and hence the fruits. What a brainstorming thing it is. I've really put into thinking that, wow, what am I saying to my child? Or for that matter, what we are saying to our kids, that matters the most. If you yourself are a positive person and you aren't throwing your anxiety on your kids, I'm sure they will be a better person. So all in all, I think this is one of the bestest advice that you have given to all of us as parents that we need to work upon ourselves. And 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 also before I go on and you know end this, I would just have to a very quick advice for our dear parents. Now the last one and and the bestest one. Uh, so in this case, so let me add one more thing here. Sure. So we also you also talked about work life balance. Yes. Right. So what is happening there? Is that most of the time, especially work-life balance, working mothers, you know, working parent, when you're at home, what you are doing? Trying to correct your children, right? Telling them, see, you need to study, it's good for your future. You take care of her health, you should take bath regularly, eat properly, behave properly. What is the energy that going to the kids? Positive or negative? Negative. One hour, two hour, whatever time that you are there with your children, it's this energy which is going on consistently, regularly. And then how children are responding? When you are asking them, okay, let's let's come sit, beta, let's do something, let's interact with each other. 
No, no, I'm doing something, I'm doing something. Why the child is not willing to come to you? Because that negative energy of yours is repelling the child. The child is not willing to come to you. Now the work-life balance, how does it come? When you're giving the positive energy, right? The positive energy, automatically the child is drawn to you. The child is behaving much better. The child, because as human being, see over a period of time we start seeing our child as ordinary individuals. And then most of us are thinking, somehow if he or she studies, goes through you know, the, the school and good college and picks up a decent job, I'm happy. Yes, we have stopped believing in the God's creation. The immense potential the child has, your child has, we stopped believing in the child. And now we have limited the child capability and the child is obviously thereafter going through the motions. Now when you are changing the game by changing your energy, this, you will see the transformation happening in quick time. Right? The positivity is which is going to bring out the best in the child. The same child who was low in confidence, low self-esteem, who could not take decision, who could not communicate properly, everything changes. Mm -hmm. Everything changes. And now this, this same child is behaving very differently. And the work-life balance is going to be so beautiful because you de do not need to. So what we tell our uh, the parent, 15 to 20 minutes if you are doing the things in the right manner. All that it takes regularly. If you are very busy, see if you can spend more time with children, obviously it is good. Right? But we are so busy these days. 15 to 20 minutes of your life, if you are spending in the right manner, doing the right thing, what else? That's it. That takes care of everything. Work-life balance comes, children are their very best and all the problems are sorted. Superb, superb. What a great way of telling just 15 to 20 minutes of your day when you are spending with your kid in the right way. And the right way is the positive way which has just been told to us in absolutely the entire uh, interview that we've got to know. The zest of is that we ourselves have to be positive. We have to absolutely give them this kind of a positivity, such an atmosphere that we can raise the beautiful child. You know, everything comes from you, your own self. So thank you so much, Mr. Batra, for being with us. You've given us such great advices, such amazing interview it was. And I'm sure the, our viewers who have will watch us now, they are going to have a good time introspecting that what they need to change in their If I may add one last. Yes, please, you can go ahead. Okay, so one last piece of advice <laughs> for the parents or everyone. If you think your child can, you are right. I'll repeat, if you think your child can, you are right. If you think your child can't, you are still right. Unfortunately, most of us believe that my child can't. My child is incapable, immature, irresponsible. And your child is going to prove you right. So, if you think your child can, you are right. If you think your child can't, you are still right. Amazing. Now, I'm really, really sure that I'm going to change the way I think. And I'm going to think positive right from this moment for my own child to make her the bestest one. And I expect that all of you are going to change yourself right from this moment, from the moment you see this interview. This is the amazing interview I've ever had. I've just done in entire episodes. This has changed my life from now. And I'm sure it's going to change yours. Thank you once again for being here, Mr. Patra. We are so happy to have you here. I've been saying this perpetually. And my dear viewers, like I told you, it's a great, great interview. I promise that now that I'm signing off, but I'm going to come back with yet another inspiring story, inspiring person who is surely going to change your life. But if you think that you are also that person who can be here on this couch, sharing your story which can inspire the world, please do not think twice. Our numbers are reflecting here. Our email address is here. You've already been showing us so much of love. Keep showering then and also share your success story. We would love to have you here. Till then, this is Simran signing off once again with a promise. I will be back soon, but with a message. Stay positive. See ya.